Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are making a giant awesome backpack. Uh, this one is called the Derriole by Trixis Designs. Uh, it's super cute. There's so many features I love on it. It's got its little side pockets at both sides here. Um, this front pocket, you can actually unzip both sides of it and then you can drape things like a yoga mat or a jacket you're not wearing or anything. Uh, it's all fully lined. Um, it's also got an internal zipper pocket. So if you'd like to see how I made this, stay tuned. Alrighty. So I have interfaced all my lining pieces with the birch non-woven iron-on heavy interfacing. Um, and then my outside pieces, I've got the Form Fuse 1600, and then I've also attached bag foam just to the bodies. So not the rest of it, but just the front and the back. Um, I also, this was a stretch denim that I was using on the bottom. So I have interfu interfaced that with the Form Fuse 1600 as well, so now it can't stretch anywhere. Um, I'm using number five zip, which is actually what the pack and pattern recommends. And you're going to need five zipper heads and two square rings and two adjuster straps for your shoulder straps. So I'm going to start with my top panel, uh, mainly just because it's on the table. You can start wherever. Um, I try and eliminate as many pieces as possible to get them down to as few as possible. So the next place I'll be going from this is to the back panel because it's where most of your pieces are. All right, so I've just pinned the zip right side up on the lining piece. Where is, here we go. My denim. Gotta love a bit of denim. Alright, so I'm just gonna put the outside piece right side down and then just feed it into the clips so it's all nice and even. And then I'm going to use a two and a half stitch length and run the edge of my foot here along the zipper. Make sure you back stitch at the start because uh, that'll lock your stitches in place. So I'm going to go all the way to the end and back stitch again. And then I'm going to twist it all around, lift over just the top panel. So we're going to fold it onto our little seam allowance here. And then I'm going to top stitch along there. I'm also going to back stitch because I just don't want anything to come undone. So I'm just finger pressing this open as I go. And then I'm going to back stitch at that end as well. Now I deliberately did a contrasting thread because it's very minion of me to be denim and then yellow. Uh, but you don't have to do that. I just like how it looks. So then we're going to line our lining panel right sides up, put our zipper so that the zipper teeth are facing us, so right sides up as well, and then pin that on. Um, I've been snapping a lot of my wonder clips lately. I think they're getting towards the end of their life, which is unfortunate. I will have to order some more. It's always a toss up for me because I've got two types. I've got the ones from eBay, which are cheap, and then I've got the good ones from the shop, which are quite expensive. The good ones last longer, but you get way more in the cheap ones. So I'll probably get some more of both. All right, so then we're gonna take our lining panel and put it right sides down and add it into the clips. You can clip this all three layers at once, or you can baste the zip on. And when I say baste, I mean stitch right along the edge and stitch Ditch it to your lining piece so it won't move, and then lay your top piece on.
back stitch at the end, spin it around, and then fold that over the seam allowance and then stitch along the top again. This also would have been really cute with a yellow zip, but I didn't have one, which is a bit unfortunate. So now we want to grab our bottom half of this. So I've done denim and then my fabric one. And it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm going to start with lining because it's sitting on top. So you just want to get the right sides, open this up like that, and then put the right sides together. Now this pattern is written to include the five inch zipper seam allowance. So everything should meet beautifully at the edges. And then I'm just going to stitch just from the edge till I run into that zipper. I'm not going to go over it, I'm just going to stitch to there. Once I get there I'm going to back stitch and then pull it out and I'm going to trim my tails as I go because I'm about to have a lot of them. So then I'm gonna, again, I'm going to line up this edge over here. Oops. Make sure I back stitch and then stitch all the way to the zipper. I'm going to go to the other end. So I'm going to make sure there's no twists. So I'm going to have this nice and straight. Go to the other end. Open out the zipper, put the linings together, like so, and then I'm just going to start from the edge, make sure I back stitch, and then stitch to the zipper, but not over the zipper. we haven't put our zipper tab or zipper pulls on yet. Whoopsies. I did not cut that very clean. There we go. You could probably put your zipper tabs on before now. I just do it this way because I do. Um, I'm going to move this so you guys can see what I'm doing. I have a clamp that has a fork bolted to it. And this is my zipper putter on a So I just put it in. Uh, so I do mine right side up and facing me and then I'm just going to split my zip a little bit and feed it through. I usually have to stand up. I like to be over my zip and my zipper pull thing is very tall. So there's one, and then I'm going to go to the other end because I want two zipper pulls on mine. You don't have to do two. You can just zip your backpack all the way around. Um, but this is what I did. So there we go. Now I've got my two zipper pulls on. You put them together to make sure there's no bulge. Mine's got a little bit of a bulge, so I'm going to take one off, reline them up. When they meet in the centre, or wherever, when they meet, they should be flat and even. If they're not, you just take one side off, do it again. Ah, see? Beautiful. So that is now, there's no bulge at the side, it's nice and flat. So that's how you want them. Oops. I did look into a zipper jig, 
Uh, they're a little bit out of my price range. To get one in Australia, I think it was $54 and then $37 postage. And I just decided I didn't need it for $80. So hubby made me one for like, I don't know, whatever was in our shed. So now I'm going to take my bottom outside panel and line it up with my zipper section now that our zippers are on. And I want to make sure that I'm not going to stitch the lining pieces. It's going to make it easier to assemble later. So we go up to the zip, but not over it. Clip off your tails. And then I flip it over. I always like to sew towards the zipper. I find that easier because I don't have a walking foot. Well, I do, but I'm just not using it. The machine over there is the walking foot machine. So now, you can see I've got a gap. That's the zipper. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my lining piece and my outside piece flat, and I'm just going to stitch that little gap together. So that all the layers will be together just over the zipper. So I'm going to make sure that I back stitch and then go over that and then join it with the other side and back stitch. And so now, if all your seams were even, you will have what looks like a solid line on both sides. And so when you open that up, your zipper is completely sealed, it's all beautiful, flat and even, but your ends are separate. Then I'm going to do the same for the other side. I'm going to line it up in the center, pull my lining out of the way, back stitch, up to the zip, back stitch. Other side. Up to the zipper, back stitch. And then just open it, oops, missed one. Open out the lining, layer it all together. And then you don't want to stitch a long way, you just want to stitch the gap. to put the seams I've just sewn together, find the center, I'm going to clip the center on the top and the bottom and then put that aside till later. So when I clip, I'll come up to the camera and show you because I can do that, I just clip the tiniest corner off. So when you open that tiny little clip, you can see where the center is. So I'm going to do that to both the outside and the lining. I'm doing it now just so I don't have to do it later. Because it all has to be done eventually. lining up the seams that I've done because then that end is the center. Perfect. So that piece is done until later. Now I'm going to grab my little side pockets because they were next on the pile. Uh, make sure you read the instructions when you cut these because it's written this way but this is the way you want to cut it because it says bottom. So just make sure you pay attention to that because the first time I didn't, these things happen. All right. Whoops. So I am just going to stitch the top and the bottom edge of both of them. So I'm going to line them up. I'm 
I'm going to chain stitch them, so I'm going to do one and then just push in the other one. Make sure you back stitch at the ends so that your stitches don't come undone. Actually, we can probably attach these now. Let's do that. Chop them, separate them, chop off the tails, and then just turn them in the right way. They should be pretty easy to turn because you only stitch two sides. So, well, the top and the bottom, not the sides. Don't stitch the sides. All right, then I'm just going to top stitch with a 1 8 seam allowance just along the top of the pocket. I'm not going to do the bottom. Just gonna do the top. All right, I'm gonna give them a quick iron just to flatten them out, and then we might attach them to the other bit so it's less pieces floating around. So then just on the outside, I'm going to lay the pocket and I'm going to line it up with my seam Oops. at the end of the zip. So I want mine to sit right at that seam. So I'm going to line that up, make sure that everything else is out of the way. And then I'm going to stitch... Line it up in the center. I'm going to stitch three sides. So the side ones I want to do right along the edge because we're just basting the side so it doesn't flop around. And then the bottom I want to do an eighth of an inch, uh, which is the same seam allowance that we've done at the top so it looks nice. Um, if yours has been difficult like mine, I'm actually going to stitch the bottom part of the pocket first and then twist and go up the side. So again, you want to make sure you back stitch this. With the needle position down, I'm going to lift my foot and twist. And just stitch up the side. Then if you want to, you can come back oops, to the other side and just stitch it down. This thread is not as bonded as it says it is. It keeps unraveling, not cool. Oh. Beautiful. Uh, any excess you can just trim off. So there is one side pocket. Now I'm just going to do the same to the other side. Uh, you could sew these on beforehand, but then you're going to have the problem of make sure you don't stitch it into the seam, because that would be bad. But the pattern does have the placement to stitch it on before, if you don't like it this way. This way looks a bit messier with all the fabric, but I don't know, I like it more. I'm not even going to trim that thread, I'm just going to come to the other side, stitch it down, I can trim it in a minute. Beautiful. 
ears are full. And I'm just going to trim off the excess. Now we have our pockets. Next up, I have all my small bits. So these are my um, ring tabs, my square ring tabs for the bottom. So I need double-sided tape. Even though this is fabric, it's denim, so it's not going to fold and iron down as gloriously as we'd hope. So I'm going to actually stick mine down. So I'm just going to rule a line down the center. So I'm using two inch rings, oh, one inch ring, sorry. So these are two inches. If I was to use three quarter inch rings, which you definitely could do if you're going to have thinner straps, you just want to adjust your strap connectors. I've also got these other pieces over here. So one's the strap. Oh, that did not draw anything. So one of these pieces is the strap and one is the piece that's going to go over to hide. My pen's dead. Ah, there we go. Much better. So my my shorter piece, I've got two pieces, and one's only one inch longer. So my shorter piece I know is my handle, and this piece is going to go over and hide all the raw edges of the handle. But either way, they all need tape, and they all need to be folded to the center. So I'm just going to do it all at once. This tape is from, I think this one's from Coles today, actually. I usually get it from Woolies, but I shopped at Coles the other day. So I'm just sticking that down over that center line, as centered as possible without being OCD about it. I just hold it a bit and then lay it down in the center and push. Then I'm just gonna chop them all so that they're individual pieces. And then remove the backing and fold the edges to the center. Now because this is fabric, this should hold really well. I didn't interface this because denim is already really thick. And if I had made it too thick, it would have been painful to sew in a minute. Now I want decorative lines on this, so I am actually going to stitch one eighth of an inch from that line I just created uh, with a three and three quarter stitch length. Whoops, I just dropped on my zips. This is also going to help it be steady. A little bit of extra security. done. Now I'm going to take my square ring, the join is here, so I'm going to slide that into the center where the joins are. Ooh, that looks a bit dodgy. There we go. A bit of thread got stuck in it. And then I'm just going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric and join all the pieces together to hold the ring at the end of the strap. So then I'm going to leave my needle down, pivot, and then I'm going to actually drive backwards because my machine can't go over the ring. So I just do a couple of stitches in reverse and then I can switch it around and that way I've got all the way to the edge. That still looks neat. Uh, the other option is, if you've seen my other videos, you sew up and over, backstitch, take it out, and then sew up the other side. Uh, but these are my smaller rings. They're not as thick as the other ones, so this way works fine for this. One more. 
and then backwards. If you're steady, you can go backwards the whole way, like that. Oh, these snips are so bad. So there's now our little strap connectors. So I'm going to take my ruler and measure the allowance that you need. So it's all written on the pattern. And you clip them on at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to use two clips to hold the top and the bottom. And then I'm just going to do the other side as well. So they are now on, ready to sew later. Next, I'm going to do my handle. So I'm doing a half and half handle because I like the way it looks. Um, but I didn't do half and half straps this time. That was mainly due to my lack of minion fabric. I really wanted to make this bag. I dreamt about it. I woke up this morning and cut it and then realized I didn't have enough minion fabric to do all the straps. So my straps are going to be all denim. Which I don't think I've done on a video where it's all the same. All right, so I'm just folding these to the center. And then I'm going to grab my other piece of minion fabric. Um, I haven't ironed this, so we're just going to sticky tape it. So I'm going to mark the center with an erasable texture because it's yellow and I don't really want it to show up. And sticky tape it. So this is also if you're going to do a split colored vinyl. So if you're going to do a two colored vinyl handle, this is the way you do it. So you just have one bigger than the other. And then fold them both into the center with sticky tape. The sticky tape on the fabric will actually give it a little bit of extra stability. So it won't move so much. Now I'm not worried about the raw edges at the end because we actually tuck those in and hide them all. So I'm not finishing the short ends at all, I'm just leaving them. I'm going to stitch it all into invisibility anyway. Alright, so I'm going to put all the raw edges together and I'm going to, I'm still on my three and three quarter stitch length, so I'm just going to stitch right next to the edge of the minion fabric make sure it's stitched down in place where I want it. Then I'm going to come and do the other side. Cool. So that is now my half and half. Oops, that's fluff handle. Pop that aside. We're building all the pieces for the back at the moment. We can pop this one aside, we don't need it yet. Um, and if you are using vinyl, it's likely to unstick in the time it's going to take us to do everything else. So I'm going to grab my straps. So these are going to be my straps. Um, if, you're doing all vi if you're doing all fabric, sorry, not all vinyl, you can actually just cut the width you need Add a seam allowance, fold it in half, stitch and turn it through. Um, but turning through denim would suck. So I'm not doing that. Um, I'm just going to draw down the centre with a dark colour so I can see it. Uh, so I need four inch straps. Uh, one inch strap, sorry. So I've cut four times the width. So this is a four inch wide piece. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. Now, if you're not using denim and you're using like a thinner 
fabric, you may want to interface that with um, a light to medium interfacing just to give it a little bit more body. You might not, you might want really thin straps. That's up to you. Denim well and truly thick enough that I'm not adding anything else to these if I don't have to. So again, because it's denim, I'm going to use tape. I don't know if I'll get the second one out of the last bit of this tape, but we'll see. I'm not wasting it, so. If you do run out of tape, so there you go, I run out of tape there. So chop it off. Grab another one. And then I just peel back the edge, if it wants to let me, like that, so I can stick the new piece Oh, it's got a plastic thing. Sweet. So I'm going to stick the new piece just slightly over that one to make sure I don't miss anywhere. So then you can just peel both of those pieces of backing off. And I'm just going to separate them. So I'm only doing one at a time. Pop that there. All right, so we're gonna fold both sides into the center and stick it down. Now these should stick lovely because it's fabric. One side, then I'm going to flip it around to the other side. I don't know why, I like to stick away from me, I like to fold it over like that, but well, I've seen lots of people where they bring it towards you. There's no right or wrong. I tried off camera to do the double at a time thing, still not a thing. I need work on that. So just into the centre. Now, if you wanted to, you could clip this in half. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to turn up one end so that there's no raw edge there. And then clip that. I'm just going to clip my one end and then I'm going to start from the raw edge end and I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge to make sure it seals up nicely. So I can just fold it together as I go. Uh, if you don't like that idea, you can clip it or you can stick another piece of sticky tape right in the center and then stick them both together. You know what? I'm actually going to leave that open because it's denim and I'm just going to double tuck it later. The denim's a bit too thick to fold because I'm still going to have to stitch through that later. So my solution I will show you in a minute. So if you ever forget to tuck your bottom in it doesn't matter. Whoops. There we go. So I'm just 
You want to rub that a little bit just to give it the pressure that it needs to stick and stay stuck. Flip it, do the other side. Just try to make sure you're not stretching the fabric when you're sticking it. on there just to save a little bit of thread. Awesome. Straps. Uh, if you want to do, you could go and do like another line down the center or another two lines to be decorative and make them a bit stiffer, but I'm not going to do that. So, pick which side you want to be the right side up. It's usually the top stitch. It does look a little bit different. So I'm just going to put my strap connector around the middle. Maybe. That it keeps moving on me. Hold on. There we go. No. It's a magic trick, I made it come off. Okay. So now that it's through, I'm going to take this raw edge and tuck it. And then I'm going to stitch that down like that. After I get rid of that thread. So that's just going to hide the raw edge. And stitch that closed. Uh, you don't want to be too close to the um, ring pull, so you can always just push a little bit more fabric through. Um, if your machine's too thick, I'll actually show you this. If your machine's too thick, we're going to stitch that bit down first, because that is now quite a lot of fabric. Stitch it down. Make sure you back stitch both edges. And then we can come and we can stitch those two bits together on the other side of the tuck under. Oh, sorry, not now. I don't know if you can hear that, but my machine has decided to not. All on the back. not a big deal. It doesn't stitch properly. That was my bobbin having a moment. Best way to do, pull your bobbin out and put it back in. There we go. Uh, another option that you could do is put a rivet through all of that, which would be super cute as well. Um, but I'm trying to do a bag that sticks to minimum hardware. Not for any other reason other than people are slowly running out. There we go. One strap. Then we're going to do the other one. So I'm obviously going to do the same thing so it looks the same. Up, 
through one side, down through the other, make my own little stuffer. Forward stitch, back stitch, done, and then we're just going to lay that down and then stitch that. So you face the tab down and up towards you and then we're going to go from behind the ring to in front of it and then go up through your pull and then down through the other side there we go so that's one side done. Then we do the same to the other side. So I'm going to hold the tab side up because that's just going to hide it um, when you pull your strap so you don't see any of that join. So you just want to make sure that your um, strap doesn't twist at all. And then we're going to go up through the one side and then down through the other, making sure nothing's twisted. So once we sew it all down, that'll be the end of that. Ta-da! So then we have our shoulder straps. Not that they look like it, but I promise they are. So then you can grab your handle that we did before. And I'm going to use my air erasable pen and handy dandy ruler. And I'm going to rule two inches from the top. So that is our placement line, that is the top part of the placement line for our piece we have not yet stuck. So I want my handle to face this way, like so. So I'm going to mark the center, because I didn't do that already, sorry. Mark the center. And then place my handle each side of the center. Now either you can put a piece of double-sided tape or you could just stitch this down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stitch it in place. Um, but what you want to do is, so my line is here. You just want to make sure they come down past the line because the line is going to be where you stitch your other piece on and you want to not see any of your raw edges. So I'm just going to hold it about half an inch down and I'm just going to tack it in place. So I'm going to grab my other side, line it up evenly. I'm just going to stitch across all of that because we're not going to see any of that stitching. Where'd my snips go? All right, here's another pair, which are equally as blunt, not going to lie, they're all blunt. So, my handle is now stitched inside the seam allowance of the line. So I'm going to do the same thing with my straps. So I'm going to make sure that everything is the right way, and then I'm just going to line them up to make sure that they are below oh no in front of the line so the way these straps work is you want to flip it like this so this is your strap and it's going to come up and over so it comes out the top of your panel so you can just stitch one down at a time i'm going to because i grabbed the other side first so put your bag under I'm leaving about a half an inch gap between my handle piece 
and these. Snips are gonna kill me, I think. Alright, so we're gonna grab this one. Twist it so it's the right way. So we're gonna come up and then basically tuck it back under and line it up in that seam allowance and then just baste it down so that it can't move. You could try and clip it from the top um, but it is more likely to shift when you're sewing and then they'll be crooked which is not what you want. So this is what it should look like. You got these like random bits. Now we're going to take the top panel. Um, I'm using denim. If I was doing it in a vinyl bag, I did mine in vinyl. And then fold the center or the edges into the center like normal. Feels like a pretty standard thing we're doing today. So there is our top stitching panel and then we're just going to lay it with the edge up against the line that we drew. So there's my line and that's where it's going to stitch. So now when I stitch this down I'm going to stitch really close to that edge and it's going to hide all of my raw edges. So I'm using a three and three quarter stitch length. Uh, you should definitely use a longer one if you're using vinyl. Because I'm using fabric, I could make that stitch length shorter and it's not going to affect the bag at all. Um, but I'm not doing that. Mainly just because I don't want to. Now if you're using vinyl, my suggestion would be to put rivets on all of your straps to give them added support. I'm going to back stitch at that end and then I'm just going to twist the whole bag and come and do the other side without snipping that thread because it doesn't matter. So there should be nothing hanging out of this bottom edge. If there is, you need to either cut a bigger strap piece or readjust everything. I'm also going to do, just for decoration's sake, a line down the center because I can and because it makes me happy. And it's going to give some added durability to the bag because I've lined all my stuff up, it's going to stitch them all down just that little bit more. So I'm just going to chop them off. You could measure it perfectly, but I actually find it easier to have that little bit extra. And you just trim it off the end. Beautiful. So that is the back of the backpack done. Now we're going on to the front of the backpack. So you will need your front panel, your funky pocket, the funky pocket lining, and your two zips. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my stitch length back to normal at two and a half. I'm going to grab a, my lining piece and my zippers and I'm going to pin them to the edges or clip them, sorry not pin, clip. Um, on my other bag I actually did the pocket panel in vinyl which looked super cool. I can actually show you. So this was my old vinyl one. So it's got the vinyl front, the vinyl sides and bottom, and then I just did the fabric and I did half half straps. Um, I like it in vinyl, but I just wanted to really showcase minions on this one. So I've put minions everywhere. 
and my front panel is actually bigger minions than the rest of the fabric. So it's just going to be minions, minions, minions. But I did really enjoy doing the vinyl. I'm just trying to make one non-vinyl bag this week. That's all. All right. So that's one side clipped. Then you want to grab your other zip and clip the other side. Uh, you can also baste this. So you could just stitch right on the edge to hold it in place if you wanted to. I'm also making sure that all my clips face upwards. So the curvy bits at the top and the flat bits at the bottom. It's easier to pull them off when you're sewing if you put them this way. So this is what it should look like. And then I'm going to take my other piece and put it face down and put it in all the clips on both sides. And if you've cut everything to the right size, or the same size, it should fit perfectly. I apologise for any banging you may hear. They are renovating the school across the road. So there's just a lot of banging all the time. Alright, so I'm going to use the zipper as my guide and just run my foot along the edge and stitch that down. Making sure I backstitch. to the other side and do it all again. I don't know if you can see my hand doing this but I'm just using one finger to pull off the clips as I go so I don't have to stop stitching. It doesn't work like that if you put them on upside down. They're a lot more stubborn. Chop off your tails. And then turn that inside out. So I grab it from the bottom because my arm's thicker at the bottom. And then you can just pull and turn it. And then I'm going to top stitch that. Oh, isn't it cute? So I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from that edge. Because um, I like top stitching. It's going to hold everything nice and pretty. And I don't know. I just really like top stitching. It's going to hold everything flat. It's giving another extra seam on that zipper to hold it all in place. Backstitch, of course. I'm going to run it as um, bobbin thread soon, I reckon. I can hear it. Okie dokie. So now we're going to pop this down and grab your uh, back piece and your pattern piece. And I have already done it, but I have folded along the dotted line. So then this is also where you need to find the center of this, which is good for now and later when we're trying to join it all together. So I'm literally just going to fold it in half and do a little snip. Don't do a big snip because then it'll go too far into your seam allowance. So now when I lay this down, I can center it and use my air erasable pen, sorry, not texture, and draw that line. It won't sit straight because it's a curve, uh, but that's okay. So I'm going to do that to both sides. So line it up in the center. And then draw the line. Because that is the line for our zipper placement for the other side. So now you get to completely rip off your zips. And we're going to put them T 
teeth to the outside but on the bottom so this is the way the teeth are we're going to place them down and along this edge the, or this line that we just drew so this is the right way for the zipper but we want to put it right sides down with the zipper teeth lined up with the line you drew and then we're just going to stitch that down uh, you can't really pin it you could probably use some really thin double-sided tape if you needed to or like one of those cool glue sticks that are a basing glue stick um, and then I'm just going to use the teeth as my guide and run my foot against the teeth stitch it down at the end because we always backstitch at the end so this is what it should look like your teeth should still be able to move because we've still got to get a zipper on there and then we're going to do the same for the other side so teeth out and down line it up with along the line then trim off your threads so now what we have to do is put our zipper heads on so I'll bring this back over so you can see what I'm doing all right so zipper head in and then I'm I want mine I did on this one mine zip upwards so that you can just have it down and then hang some stuff. So I'm going to stitch mine, oh, put my zipper on from the bottom up. So you just want to bend your main panel back so that you can grab the teeth and then just feed it in. There's no magic trick to it. You just line them up so they're even. Feed them in. And then that zips up like so. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Having something to hold the zip definitely helps. Trying to grab all three at the same time and do it is a bit tricky. Um, I mean, it can be done. So there we go. Both sides are on. So now we just want to make sure that everything's tucked where we need it. And I'm just going to backstitch over all four of the edges so that the zip can't come off. Because that would be a disaster. So I'm just going to make sure that my zip is tucked in and under. I'm actually going to put my zippers down out of the way because the idea of how we've done the zip is so that it's not sticking out at all. It's, it's not quite invisible, but it's not far off. I really like how it was created, actually. This pocket is the favorite, most favorite part of the whole bag. Um, so somebody suggested to me that if you put your zips the other way, you can put something in and zip it in. Uh, that would also work. You could do it either or. So then I'm just going to stitch in my seam allowance. So I'm doing basically an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to stitch the whole bottom of that closed. So that now it is a concealed pocket that nothing can fall out of. So now when you open both sides, you can get all the way through. You've got your zip in there and it's all lined and super awesome. Yay! I love it. Alright, so I'm going to pop that aside because that's now our outsides done. 
So the only thing left to do before we construct it all together is an inside zipper pocket. Um, the pattern comes with one, but if it didn't, I would still be doing it anyway because I love my zipper pockets. If you haven't worked that out already. So I'm going to measure. This is an 8 by 12 pocket, which is actually what the pattern says, but it's also just the template that I've got. So I'm going to measure 3 quarters of an inch in from each of the edges. And then I'm going to rule a line half an inch from the fold. And then another line 3 eighths of an inch down. So, that is what it looks like. Um, with my checkers, I was very careful to try and make them straight. It was probably not the best decision to try and sew with checkers, but I'm doing it anyway. Then you're just going to lay your pocket piece down. Make sure you're still on a two and a half stitch length. And we're going to stitch all the way around, making sure we backstitch at the start and the end. Because I am a backstitch Nazi. Oh, I can hear that. I'm about to run out of bobbin thread, I think. It's just sad. I made sure it was full before I started. Should have done a second one. You want to make sure that the um, stitches in the corner touch so that there's no gap because of the trimming that we're about to do. I'm just going to check on my bobbin. Oh, I'll get a little bit. Should be right. I won't make it around the bag, but I will make it around the pocket. So that's half the battle, I guess. So I'm just going to fold this in half. Do a snip in the center of that line. And then cut the center all the way till about half an inch from the end. And then I'm going to triangle the, out the ends. I don't know what its official name is. So, you get this cool little triangle in both ends. Then I'm just going to grab my pocket piece and push it through the hole. And then I'm going to finger crease this. Now you can iron it if you want to, but I turned my iron off because I'm silly. So you just want to finger crease. So I can just run my fingernails along that seam and it creases it for me, which is awesome. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side. We'll fold it down and crease it like that. And then grab our final piece of zipper and our final zipper head and put it on. So you just crack the zipper a little bit and then feed it through, theoretically even. Beautiful. Now I always let my zippers go from left to right. So that's what I'm going to do. So I put it on my table left to right and then I just put this over the top. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around. Pivot. I'm going to zip my zipper up most of the way so that the zipper's out of the way. When I get close to it, I'm just going to have my needle position down, lift my foot and zip it open. I'm always making sure the needle position is down when I'm trying to turn a corner. Uh, so you don't lose where you're up to and it's all neat and beautiful. Make sure you backstitch it at the end as well. Because lots and lots of backstitching. And then I'm just going to fold the pocket back in half and stitch the sides down. Now, because it was perfectly in half, you should be able to line up the bottom edges. And then trim your tails off.
And then I'm going to make sure that zipper pocket is open so that I can get my hand in later. So before we put this one down, we're just going to fold it in half and find the center. Basically, we want to find the center of everything. So I'm going to do the same with my other lining piece. Uh, you could put a slip pocket on this piece or another zipper pocket or leave it blank like I am. With your bag, you can create it how you like. All right. That's already got a snip for the halfway. And I just need to snip this final one. So I'm just trying to find the center of everything because it'll go quicker for the lining of everything. I already marked that with a pen so I can just snip that. Awesome! Now I always stick my linings on first because they're not as strong and they're more flexible and it's going to be easier to do. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my zipper pocket is open. And then we're going to go to the center of our lining piece. So I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to join the two center top pieces with a clip. Oh, I've just got dust in my nose. And clip that down. And then I'm going to do one each side of that as well so that it won't move. Whoops. And then I'm going to switch to the bottom and pin the bottom center pieces together as well. So one two and three. Now it doesn't really matter which way you go but I always tend to work from the top down so I'm going to go back to the top and just clip it around. And I want to make sure that my um, clips are facing the first bit we did so the big loop not the actual backpack panel. And then when you get to this side piece, you always want to make sure it's pointing towards the bottom of the bag. So you pin that down in place there. Then when you get to the corner, it should all just fit in nicely. Ta-da! As long as you've done all your seam allowances correct. If your seam allowances aren't correct, it may not fit as smoothly as you like, but you can just um, move it around. It's called easing it in, as, and it will fit. You can make it fit. Lots of clips. Always make sure they're pointing down towards the bottom, the seams. Because uh, if they're the same on all the bags, there won't be any twists, which is what you want. A couple more clips. Always facing the gusset. Gusset's the word I wanted before. I knew it would come to me eventually. So that is now super clipped. So I'm going to start at the bottom edge because it's straight. I always like to start on a straight edge if it's possible. It's not always possible, but sometimes it is. And then I'm just going to do a couple of stitches, back stitch, and stitch the whole way around. That's going to fall off. thread. I knew it was coming. So I'm just going to pop some of those clips back on so it stays where I want it to. Grab my bobbin out and wind another one. So I don't completely unthread my machine when I'm doing stuff like this because the first little bit of this particular domestic is quite fiddly. Um, and super time consuming. So when I can avoid it, I do. I'm 
just going to wait for that. I also make sure actually that I lift my foot up while I'm doing this because I don't want the teeth to des destroy the bottom of the Teflon foot. Or the metal foot. Whatever foot you've got on. And even though there is no vinyl in this bag, I very rarely change my foot from the Teflon foot because it glides along everything so nicely. Alright, so to change my thread, I'm just going to tie those back together. Don't even need to trim off the excess and just pull it through. And that's the hard part of the threading done. My snips are killer. And this yellow thread, it's, it's supposed to be bonded and it was quite expensive and it's fraying, which is not cool. So this one's bonded polyester. You can also get bonded nylon. They both melt. So it's fine. According to my thread guy, the polyester is stronger. Alright, so I'm just going to start a little bit back from where I ran out of bobbin thread to make sure that I'm locking all of those stitches in. Because I hate for it to come apart later. That would suck. So I'm just going to slowly around the curve because I'm making sure I'm not pinching any of the thread, uh, not the thread, the fabric. I don't want it to pinch and have a fold or a tuck. Um, and I'm also trying to take off all the clips as I go. Beautiful. So that's one side on. I'm going to um, shave down the seam allowance on the corners and just chop that off so the bag is going to sit nicer. But I'm going to leave the top and I'll show you why soon. I'll leave that top seam allowance there um, but I've trimmed off most of the bottom. It comes into play I promise. Alright, next lining piece. So we're going to go to the other side of the bag and do the same thing. So we're going to line up the top with three clips, with the clips facing the gusset. Then we're going to go to the bottom and line up our centre mix and pin along the bottom. And then I'm going to go back to the top and just pin it all in. So I always find it easier to have the gusset facing away from me so I can hold it in its 3D shape. And I can kind of push the lining in. I just grabbed out like a handful of just red clips. That was weird. That's very weird. Alright, other half. And again, with this seam allowance pointing towards the bottom of the bag. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so 
So that's now all pinned. So I'm going to put the actual panel face down, starting at a flat bit. So basically at the bottom, anywhere at the bottom. You also want to make sure that you're not stitching the pocket into any of your seams or you will have to unpick them and unstick them. when you get back to the start. And so now, it's starting to look like a bag. You've got all your linings in, so I'm just gonna go along again and trim the seam allowance at the bottom of the bag. But I'm leaving the seam allowance at the top. So now's the time to decide if you want this pocket on the back or the front of the bag. I personally want mine on the back, which is that. So I'm going to grab my front panel and attach it to the front stuff. Yeah. So again, three clips. Actually, I might do five clips because this is much thicker because it's got the foam and the denim going on you just need to bring your um, base piece back so it's sitting where you want if you like backpacks that are like super firm on the bottom you would attach a piece of like super thick cardboard, craft text, thin sellable plastic or whatever to the bottom, just this part though. I feel like I've probably got enough going on, but some people like them like super firm. So you could just iron or stitch a piece on to here and now would be the time to put it on. I would think... Alright. A lot of pins at the bottom, then I'm going to come back to the top and pin around. Now if you didn't decide to base the side of your side pockets, now will be the time to make sure that it is in there and not just flapping around, otherwise you'll have to unpick that whole section. But again, that's why I based it. It's one less thing I have to think about later. Other side. Oops. Oh my god, I keep throwing them away. So again, we want to make sure that this seam allowance is pointing towards the bottom. Just making sure that there's no creases in that corner or curve or whatever we're calling it. Okay, so that is all nice and stuck on there. Just went retrieving one of my clips. All right, so again, I'm going to have the gusset side facing up and I'm gonna to come to the bottom and stitch 
backstitch and then stitch around the whole bag. If you've got a lot of layers going on, you don't want to go too fast because you might snap a needle. That is definitely a thing. if you can see that but it's so cool okay lucky last our back piece so you just want to make sure that you push your um what's it called handle down out of the way so that you're not going to stitch it in here and then line up your two top marks clips snips whatever you decided to do can't really see what I'm doing there. Right, and then I'm just, again, pinning all the way around. So I'm going to do five at the top to make sure it's evenly held. And then I'm going to switch to the bottom and do a bunch down the bottom. Making sure that the clips are facing the gussety piece. I'm very aware it's unnecessary to tip out my clips, but it makes me happy. Makes me very happy. All right, back up the top. Put the last of this in. Now my seam allowance is actually already stitched down from when I basted the side pockets on. Um, but again, make sure your side pockets are in. Make sure your seam allowance at the side is down. We don't want any of these things popping up and wrecking our beautiful bag. Just got a little, had a little bit of a, a pinch of fabric, so I've just shuffled it up so it's gone. If you do that, if you've pinned it wrong and you get to the end and there's like all this scrunched up fabric, work from there and then spread it back out up through the other pins. Sometimes you just pull too tight on one side. It is a thing. It's not the end of the world. You haven't stitched it down. That's why clips are so awesome. I also find it helps to hold this piece this way so that I'm holding it in its 3D shape. So I'm pushing this into the gusset, which is allowing all the bends and creases to happen as I go. Clip there, steal that clip, ha ha! So again, nice and clipped. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually sitting in. So it divots in a little bit because it's holding in the shape that we want. So again, I'm going to start at the bottom, move one of the clips. Stick the bag in, back stitch, now when I get to the side uh, parts that are going to hold our 
bottom rings. I'm just going to back stitch over the whole thing to give it a little bit of extra support, I guess. doing that corner. So I'm going to back stitch there, pull it out and then just come back to my tab and back stitch over that again or stitch over it again because uh, I was on a bit of a roll with that corner because instead of coming out of it like the other side I was going into it. Okay. Trim off our bottom seam allowance again. all of it just enough so it stops kind of trying to twist its way out and then the reason we left the top seam allowance is I'm going to grab the lining and the outside one and I'm going to fold them together and I'm just going to tack back and forth along here so I'm going to have my lining and my outside and tack it and what that's going to do is help hold the structure of the bag on the inside but I don't want to do that all the way around because it'd be way too hard to turn inside out. So I'm just going to line up all my top clips and I'm only going to do probably four inches of stitching. It's just like a holding thing. Nope, I missed. My bottom piece moved. So I'm going to do it foam side up because the foam moved on me. So again, not a lot, just a little bit. Trim on my tails and then I'll show you so it's not so messy. So I've, I've just stitched just that little bit there. So I'm going to do that to both sides of the bag. So grab both my, line, uh, my lining and my outside. And then shove it on the, under the machine and just do a little bit. Like that. Just a little bit. Now we've got to turn the bag inside out. So you're going to go into your pocket piece. And I'm going to grab a bottom corner, so I'm going to push that into my hands and make a hand pop it, and then pull that through the pocket. Um, if yours is too thick, you can actually leave a hole in the bottom of the bag lining. Um, I only did it because I assumed the denim would come through nice and easy, which is looking like a bad decision on my behalf. Alright, I don't think that's going to happen. So, I'm literally going to take my lining and I'm going to unpick it. When I say unpick it, I'm going to snip every third or fourth thread on one side. which is going to unpick it for me, except maybe there, because that's my stop and start point. And then if you pull that back one, it just all comes out for you. Right, so now I've got a hole, I'm going to make the hole a bit bigger. I turn the bag through the hole because the denim is much firmer than I anticipated it was going to be. Alright, nice big hole in the bottom of your bag. Turn the bag out through there. Oh, that's much easier. Huzzah! Okay. 
Beautiful. You just want to push all corners of the bag. Oh my god, that's so cute. So there you go, your bag's now nearly done. <gasps> I love, love, love the fact that I did denim. All right, so now I'm going to stick my hand into my zipper pocket and then grab my lining, pull the lining through the zipper pocket and stitch it back up. And even though we cut the seam allowance, you can see where the holes were, so you can just stitch back through the holes, basically. I could have turned it through the pocket, but it just would have taken so much longer than this is taking to fix the issue. Okay, and then you can push the lining. Oh, okay, not that you're going to see them, but trim off your tails. It's good to be neat. Shove your lining back into your zipper pocket, and then we're just going to fold over the raw edges and tuck them inside it, and then stitch that shut but I'm going to stick a tag that I've got with my business on them in the zipper pocket I'm going to try and stick it in the center and then I'm stitching as close to that edge as I can without running off the edge trim your tails like so tuck your pocket back in and then push your lining all the way down to the bottom and so now because we stitched the lining up here it holds the shape without sagging the lining at all just going to stick my hand in and push it all to the corners. Oh, and there you go. One backpack with a cool pocket in the front. You've got your side pockets here and the adjustable straps. Oh, I love it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and I will hopefully be posting another one soon.